My guest today is a man who is a pure inspiration. He seizes the moment, finds joy in an adventure in everything as far as careers and endeavors. He is spot on, the highest quality in everything he does. All he does in everything he does, which I just said, but is to inspire and encourage other people to really take bold life choices and have adventures in their life as a former fashion designer, a television host and producer of Globetrotter TV, which you can see on Saturday nights on Channel 56 at 8 o'clock, because it's right on after me, and author of several books. The first one was African American Travel Guide. Um, yes, I can, um, about making possibilities happen in your life. Uh, through his life journey, and that was uh, such an inspiring book to me. He is a motivational speaker. His new book, and don't let the title fool you, Chasing Wild Ass, inspires folks to get up and get out and travel. And it's just a wonderful book on all John's uh, joy and journeys of meeting people and really being what I call a very global citizen. I am pleased to welcome back to the show a man I admire and adore, John Hagens. Thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. It's uh, always good to see you. It's nice to see you. John, first family road trip that you took with your family, do you remember? It was in Florida. It was family and I was a very small boy and we went to visit friends and family all over Florida. So we drove. We were always mm -hmm. in a car going on weekends. So whether we were going to the country or whether we were going to another city, so it was always, travel has always been a part of my life and it's mm -hmm. been a passion. Mm -hmm. And I, I always said that fashion was my first love, but travel has always been my passion. And as an adult, my first international trip was to Brazil. And oh, I wow. loved it. Yeah, uh, I ran a great into place, right? Yeah, I ran into someone on the street that I knew, and they said, there's a trip to Brazil, $365, including the air, the transfer, which I didn't know what that was, hotel, and everything, you know? So I said, where am I going? I don't know, but that's great. I called up 40 friends. We got on the plane. Boom. Nine hours in the air. I thought, is this plane ever coming down? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we landed the most beautiful people I've ever seen very fashionable, a language I've never heard before. It was extraordinary, and the experience was incredible. And since we didn't speak the language, which is Portuguese, we would yell out the window, hey, Barry, oh, or Linda. And, and that's how we like communicated it, because <laughs> we couldn't use the phone. It was very funny. It's too crazy. <laughs> um, so, which we'll get in later, because I don't want to talk about the book quite yet, but in this book, there are recipes. So I was wondering, when in your life growing up were you first introduced to foods of other cultures? Because, you know, we live in cities and environments where there's people, we live with other cultures. So, you know, some families stay real American or real Southern. They're scared to try different foods. But when were you first introduced to maybe a food of a different culture? And which one was it, if you remember? I think, well, my New York adult experience was mm -hmm. really the international uh, fair. Yeah, because here you can really. Yeah, and you can go out on any block and find 20 different nationalities in terms of food. Um, I think the whole experience was going to Brazil, as an example, as a youngster or early 20s, and going and having feijoada, which is their mm -hmm. national dish, having other dishes that I've never had before, having mm -hmm. caipirinhas, which I love caipirinhas, and, uh, you know, it's a Brazilian rum uh, drink, mm -hmm. and having all these wonderful things, and then exploring other places, whether it's Mexico or going to Asia, and you're having uh, long beans mm -hmm. and uh, all kinds of incredible things, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, just, just, you know, just sort of opens your whole world and the people are so fantastic because what happens is that they become your friends you know mm -hmm. I, on a recent trip um, one of the uh, guests or hosts uh, actually literally cried when we were leaving because she, she missed us so much already because we just had so much fun together and she was like family and you bond with these people right exactly and that's what it's, it's interesting I wanted to ask um, you know people and celebrations and joy and being in life and engaged in knowing others. Oh, who did that come from maybe in your family background? Was My granddad. Your granddad? Yeah. Yeah. 
because it's uh, you know you really you know get engaged with people. The love of travel came from mom, dad, grandparents, or you just was that you were you the travel man? Well, I was always fascinated mm -hmm. about other cultures, and mm -hmm. also I used it for inspiration for when I was a designer. I'd come back and I'd do a whole show on Brazil, or I'd come back and do one on Europe, or come back and do one on Africa, or do something on I was Mexico. Say, or with whatever. the fashion, it really it was a great inspiration. Yeah, yeah for yeah. color, for move, for music, and mm -hmm. everything. And so we put together packages. Uh, I remember when uh, the tango before it hit 7th Avenue. Mm -hmm. I did a tango show, and we went to Arthur Murray to learn how to do the basic steps for the tango. And it was funny because a young lady who was Norma Jean at the mm -hmm. time that you met last night, right. she uh, was uh, modeling in the show, and uh, something happened with the stage, and we both fell off into someone's lap in the audience, mm -hmm. and she said, I just want to get familiar with the audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, she was a graceful lady even then, yes. <laughs> but at least you landed in people's laps and not on some, you know, on the floor. hard floor or something. Exactly. John, your, your life is just so fascinating because you sort of just sees, you know, if you have an idea, you just kind of go for it and you give it your all and you just blow out all the stops. So um, you've always been very successful in all of your um, endeavors. Um, your pursuit in fashion, which we talked just a little bit about. Um, then when did you decide to, uh, well, we're going to talk about travel, but when did you decide to like say, well, I'm going to take the travel, I love it, and I'm going to produce a show. And, and it's an amazing show, so I hope all of you get to see it, and I hope it, you know, I hope people see it and move it other places because it's, it's, it's not just a show, it's travel but it's just the joy the joy of humanity that com you know interconnecting because you really are a global citizen and I think you encourage that for everybody so thank go you. ahead and speak thank about you. it well I think basically the whole inspiration uh, about travel came about because someone asked me I was in um, Ghana as a matter of fact and someone says maybe you can get 12 people together and I thought 12 people how do I do that and then I spoke with a friend of mine at one of the radio stations, and every Sunday we were on live, and uh, he said, well, send out a press release. I sent that out, and we got 96 people on the first trip, which was really shocking, and which is two busloads. And so uh, and I thought, wow, I'm suddenly in a new business. And then another friend called and said, what about you writing about travel? Because you tell wonderful stories. So mm -hmm. I said, why not? And then it was from a magazine to the newspapers and more magazines and so forth. And then came the book. Right, the first book. The African first American book. Guide right. to Travel. Right. And then uh, I wanted to do my memoir, which I did, sort of to inspire people mm -hmm. to live out their dreams. And I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. And also having perseverance. Right, because you showed the good, the bad, and the ugly, and how you over you overcame any hurdle or obstacle or any challenge. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really looking into the mirror, you know, it's this kind of thing, really looking and seeing what's really there. And uh, I think that was the first confrontation I had uh, quite a number of years ago. But that made the difference of uh, how I felt about life. Mm -hmm. And I would say, F him if he can't take a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and also, life is just probably, I mean, I know I, sometimes I take things way too seriously. Sometimes you just got to roll, you know, you just got to roll. And well, that's the great thing about going to all these different countries. You just see how other people deal mm -hmm. with things that are far graver and different and, or, you know. You seize it, the moment. Yes. That's really what it's about. Right. And also you talk about, I think, in, I forget what chapter I was reading, but in one country, uh, it wasn't Uruguay, it wasn't Brazil, but where you're really in an environment where people were really, you know, oh, you know what, it's not even, you may not even be you. I'm reading about a dentist who went on uh, to a country that you've been to that did, you know, Operation Smile, but it was like... No, people, I didn't do that. No, no, you didn't do that, <laughs> but the, the country you've been to, and I can't remember which country, but they were in a very poor part of it, and they said they really didn't have, you know, their houses were really, but that they were just so happy, you know, just joyful people, because people learn to... To share. And they learn to go on with their life in spite of, you know, they don't go like, okay, well, we don't have running water, we're just going to, like 
get real funky about you know they, oh, they yeah. like live their life as fully as they can well last night it was very interesting uh, one of the guests uh, traveled with me and I totally forgot we were in South Africa as they say South Africa and um, she we refreshed all of the ideas that uh, and the travel and I said oh yes I remember and I, I said there was one moment where one of the young ladies as we were flying over she was talking leaning over the chair leaning and talking and talking and talking and I tapped on the shoulder of the person next to me I said could you listen to the rest of this, I have to go to sleep. So anyway, she said, I'll never forgive you for it. So uh, when we landed, I said to the director of the South African Tourist Office at the time, I said, I want to see the locals, you know. Mm -hmm. So he said, I've arranged that. So we went into this village and we had a big ceremony. Then we went into this uh, hut or not a tent, it was a hut. And the men were on one side and the women were on the other. Mm -hmm. Suddenly they brought this chicken, live chicken, and put it in front of me. And I'm thinking, what the heck am I going to do with a chicken? So I don't know anything about chicken, so I'm they sure took they it away. You to ring it snap they, or something. <laughs> I was freaked out. <laughs> then they, they brought the cooked chicken in, and that was fine. Then the guy brought in some beer, pungent beer that homemade. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, no, uh, I pass. So he says, oh man, drink the beer. So I pretend, and I thought, okay. So I couldn't eat the, the food, you know, it just didn't appeal to me. So I, I very politely excused myself from that. And that night, the same lady that I uh, said, you know, I'm, I have to go to sleep, I knew she had granola bars. So I said, Miss Granola Bar. <laughs> and I knocked on her, her thing and, and got some granola bars, and that held me till the morning. Well, in the morning, we had pinched all of the uh, soaps and things from the hotels. So I said to everybody, why don't we put them in a bag and give them to the village because we don't need them. And we got this huge bag and we gave it to the village. They were so happy to have mm -hmm. it. So we landed in one of those takeaway places and I ordered a chicken pot pie and I said to the director, I said, I wanted to see the locals, not live with them. <laughs> 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 so that was another experience. But I did that with a sense of humor. It wasn't like I was trying to put anybody down. No, you're trying but, to keep it light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but there were so many incredible experiences. And I continue to have incredible experiences. I was just in a village where, and it was in Portugal, where a very small village and the mayor, it was very interesting, I was interviewing, and his pockets were full, bulging, and I wanted him to look right. So I said, give me the things out of your pocket. So he gave me the things, and I'm standing there for a second. This woman ran over, and she grabbed them, and <laughs> she probably thought I was stealing his stuff. I thought that's very funny. Yes. So then uh, later, uh, this oh, she didn't steal the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it was his wife. Oh, good, thank God. So this little kid was staring at me and smiling. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, I smile back. I don't know why he was smiling. So his father told me, because in their little village, they have never, he has never seen a black person other than I'm in the movies, in the movies. Oh, so he thought so, you were a movie star. No, he thought I was from the Mars or something oh, or other. Oh, wow. But it was so cute. And I thought, that's the funniest thing I've ever experienced. I'm sure. <laughs> that's crazy. It's crazy. Um, can I, before we move on to a, l a lot of more details about some of the other books, I, just for the audience, uh, what would be your uh, recommendation on a favorite, most cost-effective trip for folks? If they, you know, you encourage people to travel. Right. Some people are kind of on a limited thing and they have a family, but you know, you want, don't want to keep everybody just in. I mean, it's great to go all over the United States, and we should, but like maybe. What would be one of the most cost-effective trips you could recommend? To well, the cost-effective is getting a car and ride. Right, but I mean, if you want to go abroad or go to another, I, oh, I know you recommend some of the islands nearby because you can get in a good package. Right, like you can also get good deals last minute, for instance, on ships. Right, you can you definitely. Cause but also, they say starting at, but you have to be really at the sixth floor in order to get a terrace. And you really don't want to be crammed in a room where you just have a porthole. No, you'd like to have that little. Yeah, even if you don't go on it, to know it's there. Yeah, you know, that's an advantage. Exactly. And then watch your budget because you could get uh, uh, up, the price could go up because of uh, drinking, you know, alcohol, uh, the spa, gambling. Special well, even dining. sodas anymore on those cruises. You, you used to be all that stuff was free, but it's not like that anymore. Exactly. You have to have like a soda card or 
drink thing. It's, well, all of it goes on your room key, right, you know, exactly. which is uh, so nuts. At the end, you get this enormous bill because you have to give your credit card before you get on, so that's a whole other thing. Right. But you can go to some of the uh, Mexican uh, destinations, and they're fairly inexpensive. Mm -hmm. But rather than stay just in the hotel zone, mm -hmm. if you get on a, uh, take for instance Cancun, you go and take the local R1 bus and go downtown, and you can eat with the locals and drink with the locals. It's so inexpensive and it's so wonderful. We had dinner for two for $11 with four drinks. Wow. I mean, wow. You whereas, can't beat that. whereas in the hotel, just for a drink, it's eleven dollars. So right. that's the difference, you know. And you just have to hang with the locals. Yeah, you I have had to a, have courage to. Yeah, to I had an instance in uh, Senegal, as a matter of fact, in Dakar, where uh, I was out with the locals, and it was five hundred safers compared to fifteen hundred safers for the tourists for beer. So that's the difference, you know. You really have to. You have to open, have a sense of humor when you travel. I always say pack a sense of humor mm -hmm. and be open to experience new experiences. Right. You know what I, I find interesting because, like, I, of course, I, I've got to read some of the book and I, I forget, like, I always want to wish I could travel more, but I've been pretty fortunate. I've lived in other countries and, you know, gone different things. But I find, especially it was a while ago, but having lived somewhere else, that I sort of was invisible to people that were from my country and and also I've been a tour guide in New York City so I don't ever understand why people don't try stuff where you're at like you know if you come to New York why do you have to go to Applebee's do you know what I mean like right why do you, and, why, and why New York has McDonald's become everything like everywhere else so that when people are here they're comfortable I get that but there's so much more to try or if you're in you know Austria or or you know Uruguay or something like that you know you can I mean, I know sometimes people want to find what they know just to feel safe, but you got to try. You oh, gotta absolutely. Try other stuff and yeah. meet other people. Well, I like going to places where I know somebody who's from there, you know, so you get that kind of inside. Local feeling. Yeah. 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 There was a very interesting sandwich in Uruguay. It was a chicken and the egg in the same sandwich. And I thought, now that's really weird. And it's, a, it's called a chapita. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I didn't really, eat it, but I saw it, it's, yeah. It's very weird. <laughs> just Does it taste thought. good, though? It tastes fantastic, but it's just the whole idea. It's the a thought. egg and the chicken all together, <laughs> which came first, the chicken or the egg? They both it's came probably, together. I know, and that was probably their crazy sense of humor there. I don't know. So, um, I, I, we're going to get into the book, but I want to... Is there anything else you'd like to say about, which I think is a fabulous book, you know, Yes, I Can. Is there anything else you want to share from that or any guidance to people? We, we did talk about, you know, going, you know, the distance with your life and not, you know, regretting and doing different things. So is there I, anything else? I think you have to follow your dream. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have a dream. Uh, you have to have positive thoughts. And I think that that's what, you know, wake up every day and, and you have a plan, you know, mm -hmm. and a goal, which is very interesting. Often, every year, I should say, that I, I write down where I want to go mm -hmm. within that year. And usually I get to most of them. And if I don't, I put them on for the next year. But it's something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Always something to look forward to because to, tomorrow is not promised. Right. So you always have to feel positive. And when you think positively, positive things happen. Right. And that's what it's about. Before we move on to, um, since you've written three, do you, and you say, you know, you have goals and things, do you have a, a, a way that you write? Do you, like, say, oh, I'm allotting this much time a day? Do you just write things down? This may just, some of this might have written some of itself because of all your experience and with the, the t you're always doing the producing TV, so that's like writing and having the ideas and everything. Right. So is there, how do you work in terms of book writing as opposed to television producing? Well, Actually, when I'm writing, it's about 20 pages a day. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's a rewrite, which takes much longer. Mm -hmm. And then there's a rewrite again. So mm -hmm. you're always you know, evolving in terms of the writing. Mm -hmm. And someone once asked, how long did it take for this book? Years, because you don't really have a time frame. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the places have not changed because of the history. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, I think that what happens is that having that passion for travel and being able to, and I don't take notes when I'm away. Mm -hmm. It's all visual because I'm a visual person, so it all comes out in the you know in the midst of it. So if I'm sitting there, I'm visualizing the experience as I'm typing it out. Mm -hmm. So that's where it all sort of 
begins to flow. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like growing, like a plant growing from the earth. It evolves. Yeah, it's kind of bubbling. And it's it organic. Yeah. It, that's the word I'm looking for, organic. Right. And it's a wonderful thing. And the photographs in the book are so fantastic. Yeah, they are fantastic. We're going to, I'm going to hold up a, one little page just for fun, if you can get it, Richard. And then we'll take an offering, and Richard could show the video. Uh, and then we'll talk about chasing wild ass. And it doesn't sound as, it's not as weird as it sounds. It's jackasses in Gujarat, India. Yeah, in India. But he likes three word titles for books. So that's one picture. I'll try to show one more. And then Richard, you could do the offering. Oh, here's something. John in his, ooh, did I do that right? Look at that. Chasing Wild Ass, oh, it's not what you're thinking. It's a narrative of my travel around the world. I have interspersed photos and aromatic recipes, which allows you to dream, discover, and rediscover these great destinations around the world. The title of the book came about while we were chasing jackasses in Koch Wild Ass Sanctuary in Gujarat, India. And I thought that was a great title for the book. This is food for the soul. Not only does it allow you to dream, it's adventure, it's history, it's culinary, it's culture, with a sense of humor to spice it up. Chasing Wild Ass is a celebration of life. You have to live each day as if it's your last. Remember, my world is your world. So get up, get out, and travel! There are amazing, amazing recipes in this book. I haven't tried them yet, but you have that Mexican lime do soup? No, lemons, uh, uh, limon. Limon, yeah. Sopa. Yeah, but yeah. that sounds like it's hotter than hay. No, it isn't. It, it no, really but, isn't. But you said be careful with the peppers because oh, yeah. you can burn yourself. Yeah. And then conch. What does conch taste like? I know the shell, but what does it taste like? Is it reminiscent of any other fish? No, it's not like a fish It's at not all. like a lobster? Or it's not like Kind any? of, I okay. guess, kind of. Yeah, because he got a bunch of conch recipes in here. But, you know, uh, my mother's favorite recipe is in there, which is uh, the... Uh, cream cheese pound cake, which is amazing. Oh, and all my friends have taken that recipe and just love it. And then I have, have my favorite to... summer salad. Yeah, I saw John's summer salads in here. Right. And John puts like these great maps in here. And you know, I wanted to ask about that. Your your mom, you you traveled with her a lot. That must have been no, only twice. Although only those two times, I felt like you got to do more. But that was great, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, we were on the Baltic Sea for twelve nights, right. which was fantastic. And then we also uh, did Senegal. Uh, which, which was great. another trip, yeah. That's great. See, he's got these maps in here. Whoops. Maps. And, again, just great pictures. So, I guess, John, I don't know what else we want to say. It, it's an amazing book. It's going to, I hope you read it because he writes in such a beautiful way. You really feel like you're having the experience with you, that we're on the trip with you. And then it's, he's got... It's like so, the television show. Yeah, exactly. And it makes you like hope. For, for the next time you get to get up and travel. It, even it makes if, you want to get yeah, up and travel. Yeah, even if you're just going to go to the Catskills or something. You know, at least it's a trip. You know, make a journey. Make it's it. an inspiration. It's about 500 pages. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous book, gorgeous pictures. And um, this is a man who just wants everybody to have great lives and fill them to the fullest and meet other people and other cultures. So... John, I don't know what else we can say. Your show is amazing. It's on every Saturday night at 8 o'clock on Channel 56, Time Warner, a 1996 Time Warner, 83 RCN, and 34 Fios or something. Yeah. And what's next for you? What's the next big trip? Well, they can also see clips if they go to it's YouTube. True. YouTube. He's got yeah. a lot up there. Yeah. Yep. And it's uh, youtube.com forward slash Globetrotter TV 3. Uh -huh. And you can see lots of clips from around the world where I've shared great experiences. Mm -hmm. What's next is getting more people to see this book, to understand the pleasures of traveling around mm -hmm. this great world. We want them to get up, get out, and travel. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and John really gets like he's making pasta with people. You're making food with people in other countries. You're, you, you know, he doesn't stay on the beaten track. He goes off. Oh, yeah. And gets the real. And that's what I like about travel is I want to be with the real people. I don't want to just get dropped off at that place that looks just pristine and perfect. And right. that's what they all show everybody. And that's the only thing they see. I want to. Like the best speech. Boom, a boom, a boom. And it's not that at all. Right. And really, it, we, d and we, d we uh, delve into 
the destination. And everything. the humanity of the area you're in, the real people, not just the 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 ones that they put on brochures. You exactly. know, I mean you get the, the exactly. real folks. But it's just so great. And what's um what I guess since you are such an expert of, you know, taking a dream and a goal and making it happen, what, what, I guess what would you, and you do motivational speaking, what would you encourage people to do that might be in a little bit of a slump in terms of just in general in their direction or vision in their life or, or what they should, you know? I think they should save some money and travel. You know, I mean, there are ways, people, there are some people say, gee, I can't afford to travel. That's ridiculous. Or travel when I retire. You'll be dead when you retire. Forget that. Travel now, because you never know what tomorrow is promised, you know. So the thing is to get out there and just see what there is. And, and you can't do the whole world in a lifetime. I know I haven't been able to do it, and I'm still trying. But I'm trying to see as much as I possibly can, whether as if we have so many, we have six continents in the book. For instance, we have Asia, we have South Pacific, we have um, Europe, we have Africa. We've got uh, America, we've got Mexico, South America. So it's all there, India, you know. Right. So it, they really need to get out and do it. Right, and it, you know, you put a little mo money aside and stop having a Starbucks of a few days a week and you'd be surprised how much money you can get together. Right? Absolutely. I mean, I blame the Starbucks, but you know, we all have money for what we want to do. So exactly. Even if we don't have much money. So, <laughs> John, thank you so much as always. My it's pleasure. a pleasure. And, My um, pleasure. Let's it's travel always. together. All right, <laughs> happy trails to everybody. Chase some, chase your own and just get it up out of the chair and get on a plane or get in a car or get in a boat. Take a trip. Lift it. Yes, thank you. Just do something you believe in. That's really what we are all about.